All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful day. I got another watch list for you, and we got to talk about Microsoft earnings and everything else this week, even this start. We hit a new high on the year, but before I get into any of that, before I get into any of the plays, I thought that all of the pretty pictures were stuff we've already talked about. So I decided to ask uh, ChatGBT a couple of questions that I think some other people may have right now. So uh, let's start with number one. I asked ChatGBT. I think it relates to the market right now. I said, is it a good idea to buy a stock that is up 11% in one month? And ChatGBT said, it is difficult to say whether it is a good idea to buy that stock that is up 11% in one month, as it depends on the specific circumstances of the stock and the broader market conditions. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So it's important to conduct thorough research, consider factors such as the company's financial industry trends and analyst ratings before making a decision. Additionally, it is also important to consider whether the stock is overvalued or undervalued before making a purchase. It's also important to consider your own investment goals and risk tolerance, Rick, risk tolerance before making a decision. I was like, okay, well, given we saw the rally, I said, okay, move on. He ain't giving me answers. I said, what happened to the stock market in February 2021 or 2001? He said his knowledge is cut off. He has no information of specific events. However, he can tell us that the stock market generally experienced a period of volatility and decline in the early 2000s following the dot-com bubble of the late 1990s. The dot-com bubble was characterized by excessive speculation and investment in internet-based companies, many of which were not profitable. When the bubble burst, many of these companies went bankrupt and the stock market experienced a significant downturn. This period of decline is commonly referred to as the dot-com crash. Additionally, the market also faced challenges due to economic recession, 9-11 terrorist attacks, corporate scandals, geopolitical issues, options trade, Yeah, so he said, Said, uh, again, it's important to do your own research. He said that one again. So I said, okay, man, let's get to the point. I said, is Jerome Powell hawkish or dovish? And he said, Jerome Powell, the current chairman of the Federal Reserve, is considered to be a centrist or a moderate in his approach to monetary policy. He is not considered to be particularly hawkish or dovish, but... A hawkish central banker tends to prioritize controlling inflation over boosting growth and employment. They generally advocate for tighter monetary policies, such as raising rates to cool inflation. What is he doing then? Okay, but a dovish central banker, on the other hand, tends to prioritize boosting growth and employment over controlling inflation, and they generally advocate for looser monetary policies. Powell generally has followed a cautious and data-driven approach to monetary policy, taking a balanced approach to controlling inflation and boosting growth and employment. He has also been vocal about the need to address economic equality and promote inclusive growth. It is important to note that interest rate decisions are made by the Federal Open Market Committee, which is a group of Federal Reserve board members and reserve bank presidents so i said all right man just get to the point which is a better company gamestop or haynes brand and he said it's difficult to say which company is better as it depends on specific criteria he said one gamestop is a retailer video game and haynes brand is clothing and apparel in terms of performance gamestop has been struggling over the past few years due to changes in the retail industry and increasing competition from digital downloads however Recently, GameStop stock price has seen a huge surge due to a group of retail investors from Reddit investing in the stock, which has led to an increase in the stock prices. Haynes Brand, on the other hand, is a well-established company with a long history of profitability. They have diversified product portfolio and a strong presence in the global market. The company has a consistent track record of revenue and growth. Wow, both companies have their own strength and weakness. Again, weakness. It's important to consider your own investment goal. Man, he is so professional, but yeah. That's how we're starting. I don't know if I spent too much time on it, but Chad, we have data in the morning, Microsoft after the bell tomorrow, and a bunch of other names in the morning, and I got a couple of things we need to go in a couple of plays, so run it, baby. But right off that bat, ladies and gentlemen, drop that like and make sure you subscribe. If you enjoyed that last part, but I got some more from you for you. But tomorrow, PMI data in the morning. This is going to come out about 15 minutes after the bell, and it's going to have an interesting reaction. You know, one thing I have right here, the earnings in the mo in the morning, they're going to set the moon until we get Microsoft and Texas Instruments. So keep that in mind, but you're going to get the Philly Fed before market, and that one is services related. So that will be important. And then really tomorrow, pay attention to the PMI services as 
People are more concerned right now with service inflation. But now what I want to bring up, I brought this up yesterday. We are going to have a ton of economic data this week. So please pay attention because I think it's going to have an interesting reaction. And what I think is going to be interesting is very simple. I still believe that bad data is good data. However, if that data is too bad and it surprises even more to the downside than has already been happening, the trajectory and all of that, then I think the market will not like that as that will start to scream recession. So this is what I'm keeping in mind till tomorrow. I don't think the data will be the end-all be-all simply because you have earnings in the morning and then after the bell, it's really going to be all about Microsoft and then Texas Instruments. So that is your first key. But now the second key, we got to talk about what happened here. Again, the market has literally jumped up the best start to the year since 2001 on a global scale. This is the best start since the late. 80s but now you just hit another new high granted you're not any higher than you've been since around november to christmas but this was a really big move in everything we talked about on the watch list yesterday it came true today in the sense of this debate over recession odds going down and people saying no we're about to get hit this is late stage bear market cycle even michael wilson morgan stanley he like quadrupled down on this idea that earnings is gonna miss pretty much Everybody's debating this. The market is going on, but now well, you are at a very key level and pretty much moving forward from here now, the S&P legitimately just needs to move from here as it is the downtrend line. So pretty much what we are waiting for between this week with the earnings, the data, and then next week with more earnings in Powell you need confirmation. That will confirm any upside. Do I think this rally is a little aggressive? Yes, but if the data and earnings match up with it, I don't think anything about this is aggressive considering we're still at 410, right? Or 401, not even at 410. But now it could also be a reality check because if we just had this huge 10, 12, 13% rally and then all of the data gets even worse, none of the earnings are good and everybody was off with the pricing, then we're going to get a reality check on the way down. But the point is now, this is a key level in everybody. This is a giant game of tug of war. And what's making it weird is that you got to trade between earnings and these events and see where it goes. And some days it's up, it could quickly come down. But we are really waiting for a final move. And that's something I'll tell you. You will know when it moves really big and it will move big and it will move far away from this point and it won't even be a debate. But right now, you see how it's moving slow and we're hugging this level? Well, that's kind of what I'm saying here. Earnings could provide this confirmation, but just don't underestimate. Until there is something very clear cut about what we're dealing with, Powell will be the easiest one to see, but we might just hug this level. And right now, in the midst of it, this is all just a sentiment battle between who thinks, yeah, the data is going to be good or nah, the data is going to be bad. So that's what I think is explaining this right now. But now we are entering a very interesting point. And now coming to your final key, like I'm saying, this is the best year to, since 2001, but even as a reminder, that's why I wanted to see if ChatGBT knew it, but even in 2001, the market ended up unchanged. So January, it rocketed up 10, 11%. This is January 2001 before things got a little clapped around there. It was kind of following up one of the claps, but then by the end of the month, you were right where you started. And this is what I'm saying here. Anything could happen. I mean, that would probably be like Max Payne is one bulls lose, bears lose, and everybody just ends up at the same spot. But I'm telling you, earnings in Powell, that is going to be your answer, my friend. So I hope you're ready. But let us get into the play. So right off the bat, I got three plays that I'm looking at for tomorrow. I am in the first one, and that is going to be Lockheed Martin. But I got RTX and Boeing up pretty much LMT and RTX. They're going to be reporting pre-market tomorrow. Boeing will be on Wednesday. And now Boeing, they do more commercial stuff, but this could lead into their earnings. But the fact is you have these defensive stocks reporting, and they are not as expected to move as much. But the post-earnings moves can usually be bigger. So what I'm saying, don't try to get ahead of these early I am still holding my old LMT will go over it but my idea here is after we get this report there should be either winners or losers either big winners or big losers and then play the follow-ups from there and then depending on what we get it could lead into the Boeing earnings on Wednesday so keep that one in mind that is play number one then play number two I made a play on this one today uh, and it's quite interesting but DLB that is Dolby but also 
Disney. So there was news today of Apple VR. They're doing something, and they said they're contacting or working with Dolby Digital and Disney to do special content. But the thing I'm bringing up right now is just really if the market is good. Is the news decent? Yeah, it had a pop. It may be able to juice, but the real play behind this, Disney is still pre-earnings. They're following off Netflix. Dolby has been running from the beginning of the year. They got earnings coming up. If this could go good or any of the other earnings, this could set things off. So really, this is just a concept I want to highlight. Be on the lookout for any news plays, and if you could double whammy it by playing the event, and that'd be cool if you get a pop off the news event, but... Look ahead to the earnings, and that could also juice some of the premium and the potential moves that can happen. But that is play number two. And then finally, play number three. I really like this play, and I don't have it yet. And that's why I want to see how tomorrow plays out. We'll see if the data moves anything. But Amazon, pretty much Microsoft is reporting tomorrow after the bell. But the way you play Microsoft, in my opinion right now, is playing Amazon because it's all about the cloud. So Microsoft has Azure. This is the segment that is expected to slow down the most for Microsoft. So people are going to be looking at that. Really, I don't even think the rest of Microsoft earnings matters. I think it all boils down to whatever happens with Azure. But guess what? Amazon, they have AWS, the cloud. These are both related, and they are going to feed off of each other. So essentially, whatever happens with Microsoft, if it's good cloud data, good for Amazon, bad cloud data could be bad for Amazon as well, not to mention the computing products and even selling through Amazon and all of that and just overall demand. But keep this in mind. There is a nice link between these two. And this is the real focus I'm going to be looking at tomorrow as I've already sold out of my Microsoft on the pre-earnings play. But those are the main plays as far as everything else. Let's go into what I did here. I started off the day with 50 CRM. They had the news that Elliott bought in yesterday. Uh, I was down in the morning. I thought I could get a flip. I actually got like a dollar and some change. Only ended up making $75 off 50 shares. Flipped out of that. Closed out of the Netflix from Friday. Remember, I added another 20. I made like 100, another like 190 or 200 or something like that. It was actually a pretty good profit. Sold out, but then it kept ripping to 360, but unfortunate, but we got a decent amount. Then Microsoft, I was up like 480, 490, and this was the pre-earnings play from Friday. Went with 50 shares, got out of it, not too bad. I think it was like an $8 hit or something, so couldn't be too mad, but I went smaller with 50 shares, but now I'm out of that. Maybe if it dumps tomorrow or after hours, I'll be down to make a play. Then there's that DLB shares. Got clapped on it. I played the news right when it came out, but you know, top tick Josh had to step in, and then yeah, that, that's what happened, but yeah, there's that play. And then Sumo, this one's interesting. Uh, Thomas Bravo and Vista Partners, they said that they're in talks for a takeover of this company. So I grabbed 100 shares, 945. It actually ended up going up a little bit. And then I closed out of SGEN for $18, just under $1 per share on those 25 shares. So those are the only plays I did. Got to realize some small share plays. And now to the main plays, baby. Oh, ES, I was positive on this. It went negative, but there's that good old ES. I am now pretty much break even. I was positive at one point, like 900 bucks today. But as you see, the NQ is down 18,000. But I hope you remember this. Remember when I was like, this one wasn't down 18,000, but this one was down like, I don't know, like nine to 13,000. And then you remember the bonds were down like nine to $10,000. And then you remember Tesla child support, like 12,000 or $14,000. Y'all remember that? Well, that's what I'm saying. It could have been a lot worse, but now we have this NQ that we're clapped on. The ES is back in play. The bonds were up $5,000. I told you it was going to top out there. I said I wanted to risk it for the biscuit, but that would have been nice to just take it and reposition, but still holding that. There's my Disney pre-earnings still riding out with that one. Here's the Lockheed. Remember, I did that end of the year, and this play just got like miserably wrecked, so I'm hoping I could get an exit on this tomorrow or find something to do with it, but still in that one, and then there's the Sumo, and then Tesla. I'm up on Tesla now. My child support payment has came back so that's exciting and then UAL AAL I'm still down on those and remember I even have an old Apple play that we're down like 700 bucks on now so not too bad but we're riding everything now we got a lot of stuff working for us I did cut out a lot along the way and I sold some a little too early like Nvidia but I have a slight downside tilt and again still in that like I think I'm down like 22 now on the Ethereum. So still got to deal with all of these, but overall the balance isn't taking too big of a hit. We're in the game and I think it's setting us nice. If I could drop off some of these, we get more volatility. Chad is going to be a good one. So I hope you're ready, but 
That is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydrate Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining, and I need you to remember, baby, don't pay too much attention to any small mistakes. Don't pay too much attention to any success. You got a long journey. You are on the river. Think about the man on the mountain looking at the river and understand it's about where you end up, and don't let the timing of things take you away from the vision and the intensity that you need, baby. But, Chad, you're ready for it. We're coming Coming into the end of the month, we've already gone. Isn't it crazy how, how time already flies, baby? We got more events. It's getting crazy, and I know you're ready for it, Chad. So drink that water, stay hydrated, healthy, all of that. I love you. Hard. <laughs>